Bruce Wayne is a billionaire who spends his spare time wearing custom bat-themed body armor and beating the holy hell out of criminals. He does this to get vengeance on crime, as crime is what killed his parents. Now, as you'd expect from a man with these types of issues, Batman has quite a temper, and he is frequently very violent and very rough with criminals. But he does have a strict rule of no killing. But like all rules, this one has been broken on several occasions. Now, I have previously done a video on the people Batman has killed, a link to which is in this video's description. But this video will be going over yet another five people that Batman has murdered. Well, actually, it's a lot more than five people, but I'll be listing five separate occasions when he has killed. Justice League Dark, Apocalypse War. In this film, Batman is captured by Darkseid and brainwashed into becoming his loyal servant. And he serves as a general in Darkseid's army, planning his attacks, overseeing Darkseid's designs, and commanding his soldiers. In this role, he is responsible for countless deaths. But the killing in question is when Darkseid has conquered the Green Lantern homeworld, and Batman is ordered by Darkseid to dump some of Earth's lava on the planet via a boom tube. And he drowns Jon Stewart in lava, burning him alive and killing him almost instantly. And in case you're wondering why Jon Stewart doesn't use his ring to escape this, it's because it's out of power, and he was actually attempting to recharge it as he was killed. The recharge schedule on those rings is often why they end up dying. It's a really big design flaw. Now, this film has many brutal moments, and despite what you might think of it, you can't deny that it does have some pretty awesome scenes. This one in particular. Gotham. In the TV show Gotham, Ra's al Ghul is thousands of years old and he wants to die. But the only way that he can die, at least in this universe, is if he is stabbed with a special knife, and only if he is stabbed with a special knife that is being held by the Chosen One, who is of course, Bruce Wayne. And Raish manages to talk Bruce into stabbing him and killing him. Though this is less murder, but more of an assisted suicide. And personally, I'm actually a firm believer in euthanasia, so I don't really have a problem with this. But still, Bruce Wayne does kill Raish al Ghul. And in a way, he actually kills Raish al Ghul twice. After Raish is resurrected, and he is fighting a bunch of ninjas led by Barbara Kane, she grabs Bruce's hands and forces him to stab Raish al Ghul with a special knife. Though this is against Bruce Wayne's will, so it doesn't really count as him trying to murder it, but he was involved. And later on in the show, he also stabs Alfred. Now, Bruce actually does this while he's under some sort of mind control. But it doesn't really matter, as after Alfred is stabbed, Bruce is able to get him into a Lazarus pit pretty quickly and saves his life. Though it was a mortal injury, so if he hadn't got Alfred into that pit, Alfred would have died. So whether you want to count this as a kill is up to you, but I did think it was worth mentioning. Red Sun In the film Superman Red Sun, Superman's rocket lands in Russia instead of America, and he grows up to be a communist. And after several events in his life, Superman actually ends up ruling Russia in what is basically a dictatorship. And so a Russian version of Batman emerges who blames Superman for the death of his parents. His parents were killed in a gulag prison due to cruelty from the government. And although Superman wasn't actually aware of this happening, Batman still blames him as he was in control of the government. So in a way, he is kind of responsible since he was actually in charge of the soldiers whose neglect ended up killing his parents. So depends how you look at it. And at one point, Batman wants Superman's attention and he also wants to get a little revenge. And so he plants bombs all over Moscow and detonates them, killing quite a lot of people. I can't give you an exact count, but it could easily be in the hundreds. The first building we actually see him blow up is a museum, and we see about a dozen people inside it before he detonates the bombs, so he does kill at least a dozen people. Though I very much doubt that all the other buildings that were blown up were empty, so it's likely a lot more people. And although he does eventually get Superman's attention, the eventual showdown between them doesn't exactly turn out as Batman had hoped, and Batman actually ends up killing himself with a suicide bomb which, in a way, actually counts as another person that Batman ends up killing in this movie. Batman 1989 In this Tim Burton film, Gotham's main chemical factory is Axis Chemicals. For some reason, it's been changed from the comics where it's called Ace Chemicals. But anyway, Batman heads there to stop the Joker's goons, who are using the factory to make the Joker toxin, and they're putting it in makeup products so that they can attack more people on a wider scale. 
And rather than fight the bad guys hand to hand like he normally does, Batman decides to instead remotely send in the Batmobile, which drops some bombs, blowing up the entire factory, along with all of the Joker's goons. Now, exactly how many of the Joker's henchmen were killed is hard to say, as we don't see the entire factory, but we do see about seven goons in there before it blows up, so he kills at least seven people. And oddly enough, Batman doesn't even stop to check if there are any innocent people in this factory, such as staff who the Jokers may be holding hostage because they might need their expertise to make the Joker toxin. After all, most of Joker's goons aren't exactly top scientists. But either way, he doesn't check to see if there's anyone in there, and there likely is, so he likely kills a bunch of innocent people who are being held hostage as well. I mean, I've always thought this film isn't a very faithful adaption of The Dark Knight, but this scene really takes the cake. I mean, not only is he murdering criminals whenever he feels like it, but he is most likely killing a bunch of innocent people as well, which is not very Batman at all. And speaking of unfaithful to source material adaptations of Batman, Batman vs Superman. Batman's kill count in this film is quite high, especially since every one of the murders could easily have been avoided and just seems to be unnecessary. First, he uses the Batmobile as a murder machine, shooting at cars and then smashing right through them, flipping cars and driving the Batmobile straight into the people who are standing in a van, definitely killing them. And he flips another car off the road, so basically he kills about a dozen people with the Batmobile. And later, he throws a bad guy's grenade and two bad guys in a room together, killing them both when the grenade goes off. And he also throws a giant wooden crate at one guy's head. If he's lucky, he probably died instantly, and if not, he would have bled out from the colossal wound in the back of his head from where his skull has shattered. And we also see Batman fire a gun, yet another thing that he wouldn't normally do. But instead of shooting the bad guy with the gun, he instead decides to shoot the bad guy's flamethrower, which blows up the flamethrower and the bad guy, which obviously kills him. And the explosion almost kills a civilian, so it probably would have been better just to give a headshot. I mean, it would have been much cleaner. And according to the YouTuber, Mr. Sunday Movies, Batman actually kills 21 people in this film, excluding the dream sequence where he shoots half a dozen people. Now, personally, I actually hate this film because I just don't think it's very good. It's just not that entertaining. It does have some quite interesting action moments, sure, but it's not very faithful and it doesn't make a lot of sense. And it's quite possibly the most unfaithful to source material Batman film that has ever been made. I mean, hell, the bat nipples may have been a mistake, but at least George Clooney didn't go around murdering everyone he saw. Batman's supposed to be a hero, not a serial killer. And I do see the irony that I'm doing a video about Batman murdering a bunch of people, but you know what I mean. Generally speaking, Batman is supposed to be a hero. The times that I have listed are exceptions, not the rule. And that is another five people that Batman has killed. There are others out there, of course, and if you have a favourite Batman murder that you think should have been included, then please let us know in the comments, along with which one of these deaths you thought was the best. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.